Hi. Hi Abdul. Hi Hari. Hello. Hi. How are you? I am good. Thanks for asking. How are you? I am fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks and I just gone through your resume. So it is pretty much clear. So I would like to have a technical discussion here. Can we proceed with technical discussion? Yes, please. Yeah. Can you please help me to understand about yourself and your roles and responsibilities, your total service now experience? Yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, I have totally 2.9 years of experience in service now, and uh, I got a chance to work on ITSM module, uh -huh. and uh, I worked on creating service catalogs and applications and modules. and uh, i have created some more uh, record producers uh, order guides and uh, acls sls reportings notifications etc and uh, if i speak about my scripting part i have knowledge on business rule client script ui actions as well and uh, i worked on uh, some us kind of project and my roles and responsibilities are uh, i have supported for support development and uh, support project if i speak about my support project i let us uh, let me explain with a scenario means uh, in real time if uh, let us consider if i uh, assigned any tickets or any stories if it is a required any kind of development work then we need to go for a story and if it is no need to if it is a no need any development kind of stuff then we will directly fix it and uh, if and we will work on uh, agile methodology uh, as per client base requirements and uh, we have daily stand up calls and uh, we have occasionally client meetings as well and this is all about me Uh, if you want to uh, know any about uh, further details about me please let me know yeah yeah i think that's pretty much fine so when you say 2.9 years of experience uh, how you started your career how come you came to service now side yeah actually i came uh, to service now technology as a fresher so at that time i was joined my designation was allocated allocated as associate software engineer right so at that time i was very junior means uh, i was very fresher i was very new to service now and uh, i joined by with my someone uh, relatives uh, through my relatives uh, like that and currently i am doing as a developer service developer <clears throat> so uh if i say you are doing two projects like one project with two kinds of roles development and support right so how much percentage yeah. you do complete development how much percentage it is purely like support side uh for support it may be 30 to 40 percentage i can give uh, remaining it will be for development okay fine right so Oh, uh, for developer, uh, like developer concepts, like scripting, business tool, client script. So, if I ask you to rate yourself out of ten, how how you rate? How much you rate? Yeah, I can rate my scripting knowledge for six to seven percentage. Six to seven. Yeah. Oh. Remaining stuff, I work on administration part. So. Right. Okay. So, what version of service now you are using currently? I am using Rome version. Rome version, and you started. Yeah. Uh, did you work on uh, the last upgrade? Yes. Okay. What was the last version you worked on it? Before it is Rome Quebec. Was... Quebec, yeah. Quebec. Yeah. So in your project, every every release you go for uh, this one, or how how you plan your upgrades? Uh, no, actually, when I was fresher, no. So at that time. my seniors are not allocated to uh, go for updates and uh, check anything else like that then but before the when i was in quebec i was a part of upgradation of rome version uh -huh. okay but my question is like uh, you, in your project for you, you will your 
your client will go for every upgrade or uh, like cubic to Rome, then Rome to San Diego, San Diego to next one. So every release you upgrade. That's what I understood, right? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. Okay. So now tell me like how you capture the changes. Like if I give you one work, okay, I want to create yeah. a new field on incident table. Okay. So how you start working on it, like how you do? Can you just explain the entire process for this particular small uh, work? Okay, if I need to go for uh, a custom modifying the field means adding right. the field. Just, uh, my requirement is create a new field on incident table, okay, and uh, it should come after uh, a state value, okay, maybe customer satisfaction, customer satisfied, it's a checkbox kind of thing, okay, and I want, yeah. uh, I want to create it and I want to show that uh, after like if the state is equal to resolved or closed, I want to show it. It's just yeah. a checkbox. This is the story that I given to you. So, how can you just explain me from scratch to end? What are your activities? Yes, if I assign this kind of uh, work activity, I will do uh, directly. I will navigate to the related uh, means particular uh, incident table, and I will create a new module. First, uh, first where you create it first. I will create a field on incident table. But where? Where? You will be creating, which which instance you will be creating it? Yeah, it is uh, my develop, development instance. Uh -huh. Okay, so you are doing it in development I, I, instance? Yes. Yeah, please proceed. I will do it uh, through my development instance and once the field is created then I need to format, uh, means uh, I need to rearrange it form layout by using the form layout uh, I will be to place the field which uh, at what place I need to display this uh, field and then I need to use UI policies to uh, uh, configure something means uh, if state is uh, this one then this will be uh, shown and I, if the state is that one this will be hidden like that if want then I will do that, con that notes of configuration and uh, if it is once done then i will move it to my test pro uh, test instance to check it it is properly working or not then it is once it is done then i will be push it to my prod instance and my seniors will release the sprint about this uh, configuration okay so here a uh, few things like uh, you will be doing dev and you will be moving to test and testing will be done so who will move them to production you do it or your uh, maybe who will move the changes to production yeah uh, actually uh, test to prod is my work then releasing the sprint is my seniors will do that what is the meaning of releasing the sprint that means what they do seniors they will they will release the configurations means they will change the configurations what I am done that will be appear in the client side the changes will appear means the up, updation of the form is appear for the client that means uh, production right yeah so you are already moving it into production the update that you are moving it and uh, what extra they will do you said you will be moving from test to prod, but uh, again you were saying uh, your seniors will do the production thing. So, what extra, what work they have left with? They will release the sprint now, so... Releasing the sprint of what? Like, what exactly the meaning of releasing the sprint here, in this particular work? So, which I done with that particular... Uh, requirement uh, how you how they you move the, okay so you said uh, you created you created the form layout you created your policy and all. yeah then you are uh, you where you capture it first in update sets uh, i will capture update it uh, in sets, right so you already moved, instance uh, you already moved that object update that you only told like you moved it from test to prod right yeah. so what what else is left so releasing the sprint like what else is left with this, this particular uh, story you already moved from test to prod, right? So then yes. when you move from test to prod, uh, the changes are also available in prod. Yes, yes. Then what else missing? Right? Okay, so... Yeah. Yeah, tell me, please. 
we need to do patch you know, though that before application to these uh, configurations we need to patch that level of uh, upgradations which I done patch and upgrade okay fine yeah no problem so when you say you what is the uh, where the updates will store which table the update set updates will store uh, it is sys underscore update underscore set you understood my question uh, where uh, these updates will store regarding the uh, update so, sets right uh, regarding update sets so I, my question is like updates where customer updates will store No, I'm not getting it. You are not getting it. So let's say I have created one update set. Okay. Now okay. you started doing work. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. You captured one field. You captured one farm layout. You captured one UA policy. So how many changes will come? Close to. Yeah, three. Uh, three plus maybe. Yeah. Uh, yes. Few will come, right? Maybe let's say five changes. So five, these five changes will be called as what? Okay. Uh, now update. what I'm on? Uh -huh. Yes. Now what I understood is, uh, I will be create an uh, update sets as my requirement. Means uh, I will create an update set. Uh -huh. uh, if I was not to created any name by name, it will take as default. That is fine. That is not my question. My question is like. Uh... Uh, if you started if you started working it so you will be getting the customer updates okay the changes where in which table the changes will go on store you got my question you didn't get my question so okay let me ask you one question so what is the update set it will help to move the configurations uh, and uh, uh, enhance yes. the common instance. Uh, so update set will capture the changes. So when I yes. do work now, where it like uh, in that update set, you have something called customer updates. There you get the actual changes copied, right? Yeah. Uh, so customer updates in which table they will store? This is question. Now you got the question, huh? Uh, yes, but uh, I need to see about this. Uh -huh. okay. Now, you are moving the update set. You said you will be moving the update set from dev to test, right? Test to prod. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's say mm -hmm. you got one error. Okay. The error is saying like the preview error is saying like uh, uh, already new version is already available in the remote or local. Okay. okay. So it is a preview issue. How you take the decision to either move or uh, Pause or like accept or skip. Since if it is uh, required for me, I will take it as. Uh, uh, if it is required, you will say uh, yeah. accept. If it is not, yeah. Required, if it is not required, I will do skip. So how you determine whether it is required or not? That is the my question. I, I will go through the target table. No? So I will check on this on the table target table. Okay. So you already created one field. Okay. The customer yeah. customer satisfied field is already there in test also okay now you did some dictionary changes that change you are moving now okay so okay. the system is given you preview issue says uh, already a newer version is available in test so now okay. you what your answer is you go and check manually whether that is already there or not right no we have one more thing the uh, auto mapping field uh -huh. Okay, what so is the use of auto mapping? It will automatically map the uh, source field to the target field. So there it is, uh, like what is the use of it? Automatically mapping it, once you map it, yeah. what do you do? Automatically I will map the fields uh, in the source to target table. Mm -hmm. If it is, uh, means uh, if I occur some any errors, then I will fix it manually. Then I will proceed through update sets. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Right. So you said, uh, uh, after, so you in your answer you also said uh, UI policy will be created, right? In this particular requirement, like customer satisfied field availability, why can't I go for client script than UI policy? Uh, if we, if uh, the first priority is the UI policy, so uh -huh. I will go through UI policy. Why because UI policy will run fast, no? so okay. Because of that reason, you will go for that UI policy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I based on configuration, I will go UI policy. Ah, huh, that's fine. So I don't create UI policy, but I will create client script. So when UI policy is not there, client script also runs, right? Yeah. So this one will this one will work with client script also, but why should I go for UI policy? So that is the best practice of. Uh, using UI policy Just means so in terms of what like what reasons uh, means UI policy will run faster than client script one one reason it is uh -huh. and then UI policy is somewhat burden to the system so I will go through UI policy okay. sorry client script client script uh, is a somewhat burden to the system to run it so I will go through UI policy uh -huh. and uh, one more thing is uh, and if the requirement meets through UI policy, you know, then I will go directly through UI policy. If it is not met, then must I should create some client script which is suitable for that requirement. Right, understood. So in the UI policy page, there is a field called global. What is the meaning of global field? Yeah, it is uh, available on instance wide. So if we check global, if it is available on global. Uh, instance wise. It, what will happen? It will particularly available on that table only. Uh -huh. So you are, you see, in you are creating UA policy. In that first line is UA policy name, and second line is UA policy table name. So you are already selecting the table there. Okay. So that means it is available only for table, right? Yes. So again, now you are saying global is like instance level. So like, do you have any opportunity? to create a UA policy for every table, one UA policy that works for every table. Is that option available? That's what you're no. after, right? Yes, but uh, we can't uh, take it as means. Uh, okay, got it. So from your answer, you said uh, form layout, form design, okay, UA policy and uh, update sets, fine. Then in your resume, you said uh, service not administered or incident management problem management, so request management. So request management, under request management, catalogs and record producers work. How many catalogs or record producers you created so far? Um, nearly 50 to 60 catalog items I created and uh, Nearly 40 record producers uh -huh. I was done. Okay. So, uh, right, what is the main difference between the catalog items and record producer? While we are going with the catalog items, you know, so it will able to book only order one item at a time. While we are going for uh, record producer also, it is kind of, but there is no request table and there is no RITM and there is no any tasks under a record producer. Mm -hmm. Mainly we can take it as the difference as a, a difference for catalog item and record producer. And uh, another thing is the catalog item is uh, it, it is a kind of uh, form means it is a kind of approval step by step but here it is uh, there is no approvals means uh, it will directly create a record hmm. it is it is single record okay can i create a record producer record for a custom table yeah yes we can create it okay yes so now can i sorry can i include a workflow to a record producer no it is no not possible it is not possible, no? Confirm, huh? Yeah, maybe. 
we will attach the workflow to the catalog items uh -huh. that is uh, that we know it, that we have a option but uh, can yeah. i i want uh, maybe a special condition where there is a no 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 okay. we can't do this we can't do this okay fine now mm, right so you got so in in workflows okay there is something called uh, activities right in activities yeah. we have uh, sub uh, this one branch and join yeah what is the meaning of it uh, mainly we can consider it as uh, some few differences are there i think uh, if we discuss about the difference we will uh, get a clear cut of idea about them i uh, mean so uh, branch is using for to split the activities into two or more things that means uh, if we have one uh, transition then if we need to split this one transition into two or more then we will use branch uh, activity mm -hmm. if we uh, if we add so many means uh, two or more active uh, transitions into one then we will join we will use join activity to m mix each other right so you yeah. join each so first of all uh, the answer is correct but why i need to use join if i don't use branch and join in this particular requirement what will happen that is maybe my question another question yeah uh, if we go for one transition let consider if we have if we need two approvals for a single request no? so then we need to go for branch if we join if uh, the resulting of those two approvals is uh, needs to met at any way it means at uh, any point no? so we will join those two activities into one okay those two let's make it simple okay uh, i have two tasks okay two catalog okay. tasks i have it okay so after approval right uh, mm -hmm. i want to create one task Okay. If if the selection like maybe customer satisfied true, then create a task to service desk. Okay. okay. So customer satisfied false, create a task to uh, maybe uh, maybe some other team. Okay, service now team. Okay. okay. Two tasks are there. At every time one task needs to be created based on true or false. The okay. customer satisfied field is mandatory field. Yeah. Now, for this condition, what you do exactly in workflow? I will set if activity to do that uh, particular task. Okay. If it is yes, then I will go to create one, uh, do the one job. And if it is no, then I go for uh, no part. No part. No. Okay. So you create yeah. if if activity if yes, then one shot one day one yes. task and no for other task. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to create three activities here. So here you are creating one if two catalogs, right? So total three activities you are creating to the workflow. Agree? Okay. I want to create only one activity and cover everything in this scenario. How I can do? Sorry, can I? Okay. Ask so you? here in your answer you are creating three activities, right? Yeah. One is if and for true and false two catalogs. Right, total three uh, activities you are creating to that particular workflow. Agree? Yes. Yes. So I don't want to create three, but I want to create only one and I want to control everything in one activity. How I can do? Okay. You got my question clearly? No, actually, I was not clear about it. You didn't understand. So, my question is you are creating three activities. One if two catalog tasks okay, is there any option yeah. is there any way i don't want to create three activities but i can control everything in one activity i don't want to create yeah. three here i want to create only one and the same logic should be applied yes yes we can achieve this kind of requirement through scripting uh, which is available in workflow uh -huh. so but the script where you write it under utilities no there is one activity is there a run script okay run script you take it and then yeah i will take it and uh, i will set some uh, 
conditions based on requirement and uh, I will do that job if it is a uh, uh, yes then do this job and if it is uh, else do this particular job so, like, like that. Uh, like, uh, how you get the variable name from run script first of all you need to read the variable name na? so uh, customer satisfied true or false how you read the variable name from uh, run script yeah uh, uh, current dot variables dot variable name is the uh, mm, that is okay now yeah. you got that value true or false yes or no okay mm -hmm. then uh, if it is yes in within the yes uh, like within the if condition what code you write to create a job for your requirement uh, can you please repeat again that requirement uh, requirement uh, is okay so there is a field called customer satisfied okay so customer satisfied true if it is true means you need to create a task to service desk team okay okay if it is false means you need to create a catalog task only but different team maybe service no platform support team yeah so you said you will create one if condition if activity yes. and then create two more uh, catalog tasks i don't want to create three here is there yeah. any possibility to do everything in one activity that's what my question you said yeah. run script yeah yeah under if condition i will mention that variable name if it is true if it is true, if it is, it is the, true uh, I will open the brackets and I will set some job to do the job, what job? What uh, job? create create the task. How you create uh, the job? From script how you create the task? Uh, initially I will initialize a new record. No? So which table I will you initialize? The table which is a custom table is there, no? though that custom table name I will use and uh, under here that custom table. Creating. Here what we are creating, we are creating which record we are creating here. As per our requirement, which record we are going to create if it is true, if it is false. If it is false, we uh, we know we need to go for uh, service new platform desk. No, so, no, that ticket we are creating, what type of ticket it is? Is that an incident? Is that a problem? Is that it? Yeah, uh, it is incident type of uh, ticket. Um, no, my requirement is catalog task. I want to create a catalog task to service no platform team or service test team. Okay. If it is true, I want to create one catalog task. If it is false, I want to create maybe the, the other catalog task. Either time, one only will be created because customer satisfied yeah. is true mandatory field. Yeah, then we can create a task. No? Uh, you can create a task, but how you control this particular uh, uh, situation in task? You said run script you create, but in run script how you create a task? Yeah. You got my question now clearly? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know the answer? No, actually. Okay. So now, uh, yes, service catalog. So see here, I have a request. Okay. My manager, <coughs> our platform manager came and said, we are getting so many okay uh, requests for adding users to group. Okay, service now platform team is getting so many requests daily okay uh, saying like uh, add this user to group add that user to group and all okay. okay for that instead of uh, doing it manually why can't we do automation so what uh, the architect came up with saying is create a catalog form okay in the form okay. just to take a group name and the users let's say uh, catalog item have two fields one is like group they can select a group service desk okay yeah. and after that they have one field users i will select two people okay abdul raja and hari so okay. now once you submit the ticket okay the workflow is like it should go for uh, the particular uh, group manager approval yes. once he approved then i don't need any task to be created i want uh, these users to add to the group and close the ratm Okay. So here uh, we are doing automation, uh, automatically adding the users to. Yeah. How we can do it? We can directly create uh, after approvals. We can 
fix it. it means uh, we no need to create any task. No? Mm. So after approvals, we go for directly. Uh, we skip the task. Uh, activity. Uh, we skip the task activity, so, but we yeah. need to do the job. Now, how we do the job? I will start. Uh, means you are asking about the workflow, right? So in workflow, activities. Yeah, in workflow, yeah. first thing is the workflow definition start. is yeah. Uh, start is fine, but uh, yeah. it needs to go for manager approval, group manager approval. Yes. Okay. Once he is approved, then I need to. Uh, get those two users added to group automatically and close the RATM. Mm -hmm. Okay. First thing is maybe I am expecting from you like how you get the group manager as an approver in approval table, uh, approval record. Second thing okay. is how you automate this, how you implement this particular code, code or uh, activity, which activity you take and how you design it so that the users will automatically add to the group. I know it catalog task here. Yeah. First of all, I will use if condition to check if uh, whether the manager is approving it or not. First, if how it you is get, approved. Uh, no, no. First, sorry? how you get the manager of the group? Uh, I will create one more activity here before approve if conditions. Uh, here, I will use approval approval conditions uh, means approval action I will use approval action you take it that's fine but how you get the group manager as a approver group you select it in the form right yeah but a group group record have a manager how you get the manager value from workflow and use him as an approver uh, by using current dot uh, current dot variables dot variable yeah variable. variables now uh, may, the variable yeah. group group will come yes then you get a group. then yes yeah I, I will get that group and then I will manually add the two users how you add it now you got a group here and you need a person to approve how you get the group manager as a approver So when you say you add manually to the users, right? So yeah. you, you, in the in the approval activity, maybe you have uh, users there. Okay, then you go and select users. Huh? So how, what users you select? There are 1,000 groups are there. 1,000 groups have different different group managers. Yeah. Uh, then I need to go for uh, approval group. We don't need approval group. We need a group manager. So group, you know, current dot variables dot group name, you have it. Yes. Then the, for that group, you have a manager field. How you get that manager and then use him as an approver? This is my question. Okay, let's say somehow you implemented the manager, manager is approved. Then next main activity, how you add the users to group without the task. If the condition is satisfied, then the group creation of group will be done. Mm -hmm. Without creation of uh, task. Create of, the group is already there now group is there but I want to add the members to the group that is what my catalog item purpose is and I don't want to do a manual work here I want to automate this process yeah. okay understood fine so now uh, you said business rules right so what is the difference between after and async business rule Async business rule is a kind of uh, asynchronous, it will work as asynchronously and uh, after business rule will work as synchronous mm -hmm. and if uh, let me explain with a small scenario yeah. and uh, let us consider there is a uh, one company named ABC organization okay. then in that organization for example I have a problem record and under that problem record we have 
for example 20 related instance mm -hmm. and uh, if my there here is my requirement is uh, to close all re related incidents by whenever the problem state is closed okay then i will use here business rules uh -huh. for the condition i i can choose after or uh, async both i can use but uh, the difference is here let us consider for problem record it will take to close for five minutes hmm. under that uh, problem record there is 20 uh, related instances hmm. even though 20 records also take 20 into 100 uh, seconds so there will be so much of time it will take it is taking for, by using after uh, business rules hmm. if I take if I go through the async business rule the when I was when I was set problem state is closed mm -hmm. then first of all the problem state is closed uh, problem will be closed and then uh, the remaining job means uh, related instance will automatically closed but it is uh, run asynchronously means uh, the screen will not freeze for you to until the total uh, transition so has been both cases, okay one more one question is in both cases okay uh, this total number total number of like minutes or seconds the time is same or different yeah it is based on means uh, okay. i am taking no, as no. example ah, for I understood, five, five I understood seconds your point. Like okay. forget yeah. about synchronous it runs synchronously or it runs asynchronously but yeah how? it will take same time but uh, the remaining job no, it will run on background right yeah. good understood. until the completion of process the screen will not freeze for you okay good good understood so thank you and uh, mm, 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 mm. so what is cascade variables yeah uh, under uh, workflow we have cascade variables uh, sorry under uh, record producer we have cascade variables mm -hmm. and uh, Under record producer, we have cascade variables. Okay, then what is the use of it? Do you know the use of it? What is the use of cascade variable? It means uh, they are use it to allow the functionality using the same value into different catalog items by uh, pulling the form like that okay fine uh, understood so you said uh, you know sql html javascript right ITS. So javascript is like okay so let's take one scenario right yeah. so i will give you one sysid okay okay the CSID is like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, something. It should be 32 characters, right? So I yes. give you the CSID and I want to know the short description of the CSID. Okay, and uh, you see the incident table record. So it's an incident CSID. I want the short description of it. Can you tell me the code? Yes, it is where, uh, let's consider the variable is as ABC where ABC equal to new glide record of we are gliding here incident table mm -hmm. glide record of incident and uh, ABC dot add query of that CSID uh, that CSID is there now so we entered here that CSID mm -hmm. and uh, we query that uh, CSID okay. after for we query, are querying what, what for querying it what uh, line you write it there Uh, CSID, we mentioned that CSID. Add query. Your second line is like uh, gr dot add query of CSID equal to CSID that you, you write it. Then what is the third line? We query that uh, CSID. Yes. GR, sorry, uh, means it is abc dot hmm. query. abc dot query, okay. Then, yeah. then what you do next? Then I will print it as a gs dot print of abc dot a short description uh, plus gr sorry abc dot short underscore description i will do this kind of uh, scripting where you write this code first to print it 
I will use background script. Oh, background script. Okay, fine. Uh, fine. So in SLS we have something called retroactive start. Yeah. Can you tell me why it is? Yeah, I can explain with a small scenario again. Hmm. Yes, please. Uh, uh, let me consider the if I I assigned one ticket. Uh huh. Uh, means the group name is ABC, hmm. and for the ticket we have eight hours of time to solve it. Hmm. After eight hours of time, it will be breached. So then after two hours of time passing, then I uh, I find out that this ticket is not uh, suitable for my assignment group. Then I need to forward this ticket to some X Y Z group. Mm -hmm. Then if if I as reassign this ticket to another group they will have only six hours of time when the retroactive start is not checked if the retroactive start is checked then that xyz uh, group also having eight hours of time to solve it this is the working operation of it retroactive start oh, fine. Uh, got it so you said you are also worked on moving the data from one instance to instance using port sets and transform maps and so okay <clears throat> so what is the we, uh, what is the use of coalesce? Yeah, uh, by using coalesce, we can we can uh, avoiding the duplicates of entry recordings. Means by using transform maps, let us consider the uh, we are up uploading some uh, records into the service now. We need to know if the a record is already having in the system or not we need to auto map if any of this uh, let consider uh, two same incident numbers is there then we can set uh, coalesce for that by using coalesce we can uh, we can remove the duplicates of entries records we can find out. Right. Duplicates in the sense, let's say you, okay, let's say I give you one, uh, one data. Okay, the data is incident data. Okay. okay. And uh, the Excel sheet is having 100 incidents. Okay. Now you are loading the data into service no incident table. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, for which field you set colors and why? I will set. Uh, on incident number field as coalesce uh -huh. because yeah. incident number is a uh, unique no? so I will use coalesce for incident number okay. to re avoid the duplicate entries okay. so if we, let's say there is one incident like incident 1 2 3 4 5 okay that incident is there in your sheet and it's also there in the target table okay, okay. that time how the map will do how the data load will do Will it create a new record or will it update the existing incident or it will skip it? It will skip it uh, if we are applying coalesce. So when you are applying coalesce, it will skip. Then uh, let's say in Excel sheet for that incident, maybe a new short description came. So it, it will not happen. Huh? No, we are setting coalesce for number field no? so for, for it when you skip. say coalesce so you are setting it it will check and skip it it won't touch it that's what the meaning of coalesce huh? yes it will check only with the number it will go it will to check, number. Uh, it will check for that number that is fine but after checking yes. what it will do will it, it will skip it? Okay. yeah oh, got it so experience import sets transform maps notifications saving performance issues and day by day configuring so troubleshooting, okay. Yeah. Uh, what kind of troubleshoot you do? Let's say you are running a client script, okay. okay. This client script now, when you are running it, you are getting any small issue, mm -hmm. okay. So how you uh, how you check this? How you troubleshoot it to make it uh, know the issue or uh, to make it uh, the script works? First of all, I will do the uh, script run. Mm -hmm. I will match the expected result and uh, that uh, uh, working result means uh, executed results and expected result. Uh, I will match. 
that will not that is not working every time you are running na it is saying uh, it is failing with some issue maybe i maybe i can give you okay undefined uh, email okay. the error you are seeing in the client script uh, like form every time and the error is telling you that uh, undefined uh, character in bracket email that is the issue So, I'm actually I'm properly not getting. Okay, uh, you are not getting it. So, how much you understood this question? Can you just tell me? Repeat it based on your understanding. Yes. Uh, with this client script you are doing something you are, okay you are you are, you are written one client script okay and then it is the on change client script let's say it is on change client script okay, okay. on change of some abc field when you are changing abc field okay uh, mm -hmm. then uh, you, you, when you are changing the abc field the script is getting executed and running okay yeah then you you written that code in the back end and you are trying to see that same code uh, results in the front end so okay. in front end you have got one error okay what yeah. error it is like uh, uh, not a undefined undefined variable the variable name is what uh, email okay e e m a i l email so this is what issue is or else some other issue okay whatever the issue could be okay, how you troubleshoot the client script which is giving an error this is my question i will use underscore email as variable means uh, i will use underscore before that if you give underscore email then what will happen nothing will happen no? why why you give underscore email Fine. I think I'm done with my questions, uh, Abdul. You have any questions to me? Yeah, I have some small ah, inquiries yes, with you. Yeah. What kind of project it is? Uh, if I selected, I am when I am going to join. Right. Good question. So the project same similar like uh, what you are currently doing. It's like a support and administration and development project. Okay. okay so you will be having lot of catalog items creations and uh, modifications them and then uh, itsm related modules okay so these kind of work only you can able to do it matches to your profile and we also have service now service portal okay a little bit of service portal work we may get uh, service portal related enhancements so do you have yeah. any knowledge on service portal no no okay but yeah. but i can learn if i get a chance okay. and also i have you can ask to learn service portal and the integrations as well integrations as well. okay fine so fine that is the answer so it is more or less yeah. similar to your current profile here then what could be the team size so we have a team of uh, six people here okay okay and uh, you will be the seventh person and we have two strong uh, like uh, senior developers three junior developers one tester Okay. So you will be kind of uh, yeah development developer only. Okay. If I selected what kind of projects, uh, what kind of uh, topics I need to learn to help with that yeah, project? Yeah, as I said, uh, it, is? it is morely like same kind of thing, but service portal you can see. That okay. is one thing you can brush up. Yeah. 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 Uh, this is enough from my side as well. Okay. fine abdul so i think uh, that's it from my side okay so i would like to tell the feedback here okay yes so please so feedback is uh, first of all uh, come come by line by line so first introduction okay introduction is good you covered a good amount of introduction that is like wo your voice is good okay maybe you can little improve but uh, yeah even that also like the current voice scale is also good and uh, introduction side it is i feel it is little lengthy you need to cut it okay 
you know need yeah. to tell about uh, uh, about uh, like uh, your work and all when it is introduction so just to cover how much you know how much you do what is your exact role that's it okay so you i think given something extra also in the introduction part that you need no need to give for suppose if i get a work okay scrum okay scrum master agile process and all that and all not required okay sure. until and unless they ask okay and now second thing is uh, upgrade to cubic and roam yes that's fine so uh, yeah that is i think good so when it comes to the first technical question field creation okay answer is correct technical answer is correct like creation of field in the table form layout and then uh, ui policy but when it comes to update set part i think it is not clear you said you only move to update set to production and then you also said like your scrum master will do production uh, like clearance so the production clearance is mainly like when we are moving the things to production means you are moving the update set that is the only thing so once you move the update set to production then that is available in the production no need to do anything else right yeah. so yeah that may, the answer should be little matured there and even the technical answers also you need to use the proper wording so two places wordings are not proper i think you need to little practice it okay and yes. uh, uh, when it comes to update set okay where the update set will store so the question i i think i need to try try to repeat it three four times okay yes so you need to understand the question okay that uh, you need to start focusing it okay so normally in interviews they don't repeat the question again and again okay so okay. try to understand the questions in first instance only okay and yeah. the table name is different where update sets updates will capture that you can review it, is, it stores in xml table update underscore set and update underscore set underscore xml okay when it comes okay. to ua policy yes ua policy is given the wrong answer for global okay global is not for entire platform or instance it's for views right so if you yeah, uncheck yeah. it it will select it will allow you to check the view for a specific view what what for what the ua policy needs to be applied okay yes. and remaining two answers so regarding that question you've given it so on total the question answered but small small uh, like inside questions like update set question and uh, ua policy question and uh, okay that on uh, that they are not correct but Uh, the other question which i asked like uh, comparison of qa policy to client script that is okay okay still that answer should be little matured okay yeah yeah and uh, uh tm us okay so when i ask one question about uh, update sets okay so the mm-hmm. update set concept you went to transform maps you said transform maps auto mapping and uh, mapping field mapping and data data transfer and all you told you have you have yes. did you recollect it yeah 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 so you are getting confused between topics L- looks like you need little more practice and when you are practicing it you need to visualize all the forms and options those things are not coming in your mind when you are answering so that yes. so you need to practice little more and when you are practicing it you need to see each option and when you are answering it your mind should visualize that form and option then only you 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 confidently speak okay and yes. request management that means catalogs yes all your uh, initial questions yes you given uh, three questions three answers so workflow to so when i asked the difference between like can we implement a workflow to record producer we have an option using script we can do but uh, we will say why to use script here because we already have workflow why we need to instead of that you can they can go to catalogs and workflows only you know why they create uh, they will uh, request for request uh, like record producer in in case they want workflow okay so that is the answer but the option is there so in workflows branch and join yes you you given a right answer only but it should be little matured and uh, communication yeah main thing is you need to little improve communication communication in the sense not english but these wordings okay right word use of right words those things okay 
and adding users to group i think uh, that you re given wrong answer right yes yeah you try to run script here run script and initialize gr member table and then read those values from group and users and then uh, initialize and insert the values in gr member table so automatically the users will be added to group okay and also getting the group manager as a approver okay you get the variable gr group okay current dot variables dot variable name and use dot work to get the manager if you take a variable is equal to grp grp dot manager will get you the manager value and then that value you pass to answer okay so that you will write it in script script of approval activity and the second question i want one task one task instead of three activities okay if customer satisfied equal to true one task if customer satisfied equal to not true another task so here we are using three activities right instead of three activity if i want to use one activity take one catalog task activity in catalog task write a script in the catalog task activity you have script action okay script also you can write it there so there you write it if current dot variables yeah. dot variable name equal to true okay then task dot short description equal to this one task dot assignment group equal to that sys id of the group sys service test group false then uh, yeah same thing task dot assignment group equal to service no platform support team sys id okay, okay. that you need to do and uh, after and async business rules yes you given the right answers but wording you need to little bit confident okay the answer yes. is right problem incidents and all and uh, your resume is also you need to little uh, format it because i can see the fonts are not consistent okay so please okay. focus on your resume so make all one font and uh, alignment also little bit you think you need to practice font in the sense font is same but uh, the gap between the fonts is not correct okay so you need yeah. to maintain the same uh, space also between the okay uh, lines and yes. uh, it should be a little more attractive and uh, i think i script side yeah script side you covered good the question that i asked you no know, that is fine i think that's it uh, overall this is all your uh, feedback like uh, yeah yeah could you please uh, reveal that how much of percentage of my regarding my interview uh, yeah so i try to answer all basic questions only from your your uh, statements only okay, i can uh, rate you like uh, 50 out of like 5 out of 10 so if you ask me like uh, the scale for 10 i will give 5 based on the questions that i asked i can uh, yeah yes and that okay. those are basic questions the only thing is you know the concepts but you need more practice and you need to visualize those things you are not getting them in mind yes yeah. any questions to me please no oh, it's clear it is clear okay so i am ending the interview here okay thanks and uh, thanks yeah. for your time okay have a great day